Okay, so first of all, I'm going to hold down shift and right click and select open PowerShell window here. And inside PowerShell, I'm going to copy and paste this code and then press enter. And this will change the names of the photos to the date that they were taken. I'll leave a copy of this in the description and I'll spend the rest of the video explaining step by step how all of this works. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to hold down shift and right click and select open PowerShell window here. Then inside of Windows PowerShell, I will type get dash child item and enter. And that gets me a list of all of the files in this folder. Then when you press the up arrow key on the keyboard inside Windows PowerShell, it will get you the results that you previously typed in. And I only want to get the first file in this folder. So I'll get the results from the get child item and pipe them into select dash object dash index zero and enter. And that gets me just the first file. Then I'm going to take this and put brackets around it. And then do dot directory name. And this will get me the name of the folder with the folder path. I can then take all of this and turn it into a variable. So I'll type dollar sign folder is equal to this and enter. And that doesn't show me anything, but if I type dollar sign folder again and enter, I get the same folder path that I did before. Now there's an issue with this because if I do folder dot get type open close brackets and enter, this is currently a text string. And in order to actually be able to extract information from it, I need it to be an actual object. So I'm going to create another variable to turn this into an object. And that would be shell is equal to new object dash c o m object shell dot application and enter. Then I can do dollar sign shell folder is equal to dollar sign shell dot name space open brackets dollar sign folder and close brackets. And this will take the name of the folder that is currently being stored as a text string and shell.namespace will turn it into an actual folder object. And then that will be stored as the variable called shell folder. If I press enter, it won't actually show you anything. But now if I type dollar sign shell folder and enter, you can see that this is now an object and that the folder is called photos. And if I do shell folder dot get type, open and close brackets, it will tell me the same thing. Now I also need to do this for the files as well. I'm just going to do it for the first file, first of all, as an example. I am going to press the up arrow key to get back to this and then change directory name to name and change this here to file. And this will get me the name of the first file in this folder. And it doesn't actually show you anything, but if I type dollar sign file now, you can see I've got its name here. Now again, there's an issue with this because this is just being stored as a text string at the moment. So in order to convert it into an actual file object, I need to do dollar sign shell file is equal to dollar sign shell folder dot pass name open brackets dollar sign file and close brackets and this will take the name of the file which is currently being stored as a text string and then shell folder dot pass name will turn it into an actual file object and then that will be stored as the variable called shell file and enter and now if I type shell file, 
you can see that this is an actual object. And if I do shell file dot get type, open close brackets, it will tell me the same thing. Now that I have turned both the file and the folder into actual objects, I can use them to extract information about the file. If I paste in this line of code here and press enter, it will show me a list of all of the extended file attributes. So this is all of the extra information about this file. And if I scroll back up to the top, the piece of information that I want is the date taken which is attribute number 12. So now that I have done that, I will just clear the screen using control L and I can now type dollar sign shell folder dot get details of open brackets dollar sign shell file comma 12. And this will get me the details about the first file in this folder and the detail that I want is the date taken which I have just seen is attribute number 12. And when I press enter, you'll see I get this date here which we can compare to the date taken here, the 11th of April 2018 at 7.46 p.m. and it's the same date here. Now, the little rectangles are just special characters that Windows PowerShell can't work with, but we're just going to ignore them for the time being. Now that I've gotten the date taken for just one file, I want to get the date taken for all of the files in this folder. So in order to do that, I'm going to use get child item again, and then pipe this into a for each loop and open curly brackets and then enter. Then on this new line, I'll create a new variable which will be called raw date. And this will be equal to dollar sign shell folder dot get details of open brackets dollar sign shell folder dot pass name open brackets dollar sign underscore dot name close brackets comma 12 and close brackets again so the dollar sign underscore means take the results from whatever you're currently processing and what we are currently processing is the results from the get child item which are then being piped into this for each loop so this will get me the names of all of the files in this folder However, they will be stored as a text string. So then the shell folder dot pass name converts these into actual objects. And I can then use the shell folder dot get details of to get details about these files. And the detail that I want is the date taken, which is the 12th file attribute. Then all of this information gets put into the variable called raw date. Now this line of code just creates the variable for me. In order to get it to actually show me the variable, I'm going to type raw date again down here and then close the curly brackets and enter. And now I have a list of the date taken for all of the photos in this folder. Now that I have done that, I am going to modify this code to include the variables that I have made previously. So I'm going to use shift enter to put this on a new line, then remake the shell variable. So it will be shell is equal to new object dot com object shell dot application. Then inside the for each loop, I'm also going to remake the folder variable. And this time it will be equal to dollar sign shell dot name space open brackets dollar sign underscore dot directory name and close brackets. 
So dollar sign underscore again means take the results that we're currently processing, which are the results from the get child item and dot directory name means give me the name of this folder. That will currently be stored as a text string. So I then use shell dot name space, just like I did in the example at the beginning to turn this into an actual object. And then that becomes the folder variable. Now that I have renamed this variable, I actually need to go down to the second line here and change the shell folder to be called just folder. And I am remaking both of these variables here because I want to have everything together. But it won't actually change anything if I press the enter key now. I get these same results that I did before. The next step is to remove all of these little rectangles. So I'm going to change the raw date and put brackets around all of this. And then at the end, add in dash replace. And then inside quotation marks, I will put a set of square brackets. And inside these square brackets will be the caret symbol. Then everything that I put after the caret symbol will be things that I want to keep. So I'm going to do backslash W and that represents all letters and numbers. Then a space because there is a space separating the date and the time. Then a forward slash because that's separating the day, the month and the year. Then a colon because that's separating the hours and the minutes. And now it will keep all of these characters and remove everything else. So in this way, I can remove the little rectangles without having to know what they actually are. And now when I press enter, you can see I have the same dates again. They just look a lot cleaner now. Then the next step is to take these dates and convert them into an actual date format because you can't tell just by looking at it, but these are currently just a text string. So in order to do that, I'm going to add in another line here and do dollar sign date time and make a new variable. Then in square brackets, I'll put date time. And then after this, I will put the raw date and close brackets. Then on the next line, I will change this because I now want it to show me the date time. Now this is going to produce an error. And the error is cannot convert this date to the date time because the string was not recognized as a valid date time. And that is because date time in square brackets assumes that you're working with the US date format. So the month first, then the day, then the year. However, I am not doing that. I am using the UK date format. So the day first, then the month, then the year. If you are working with a US system, then this will probably work for you. But if not, there's an extra step. I'll use Control L again to clear the screen. And then in here, I have to add in another variable. And that will be dollar sign UK culture is equal to in square brackets globalization dot culture info then after the square brackets in quotation marks en dash gb and then down here i need to edit the date time so i'm going to add two colons in here and then pass the raw date comma dollar sign UK culture. And this basically forces the date time to work with UK dates and enter. And now you can see I have all of my dates converted. Then the next step is to actually tell it how I want it to format my dates. So I'm going to create another variable in here called date taken, and it will be equal to date time dot two string open brackets 
And yes, I am now converting the date and time back into a text string. So I'm doing the exact opposite of what I just did. But now I can control the way the date time looks. So this needs to be inside quotation marks. And I'm going to have four Ys for the year and then two capital M's for the month and then dash DD for the day and a space, two capital H's for the hour and then dot MM for the minutes. And then I'll change this variable down here again because I now want it to show me the date taken and enter. And now you can see I have the same dates as I did up here. They are now just formatted the way I want them to be. And you can choose whatever formatting you like here. And then the next step is actually the final step where we actually rename the files. So I'm going to delete this here and it's going to be rename dash item dollar sign underscore dot full name then a space, open brackets, dollar sign date taken plus dollar sign underscore dot extension and close brackets. And so what this will do is rename all of the files. We're going to be changing their full name to the date taken plus the file extension added on the end. And now when I press enter, it should change all of the names of the files here and enter. And now you can see the names of the files have changed. So if we look at this one, for example, the date taken here is the 6th of February 2019 at 1234. And the name of this photo has now been changed to 2019 02061234. So all of these files have been renamed successfully. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to change the names of photos to the date that they were taken using Windows PowerShell. And that is everything.